Brian and Manzi actually raised um, a very good point too about um, uh, you know, ages within the program. We talk a lot about uh, people being young people without experiences, um, but a number of the people that have come through the program are mature um, and have had late diagnosis or are, are just mature people that are looking for a different change um, or the, looking for an opportunity um, that's presented to them by the program. So there isn't any age limit um, in, in terms of the, um, the recruitment activities that, that we do. Um, it, it's, it's purely based on um, you just need to have the diagnosis and, and to come along to the, um, the workshops um, and the activities that we do in the workshops um, are based on competencies. So they're not based on age or skill set or qualification. Um, it's, it's purely about how you interact with, the, um, with the, the workshops that have been designed specifically to show us the skills that, that we need. Um, because a lot of the time, if you've never worked in that area, you don't know if you have the skills because you've never tried them. Um, so the activities are about simulating um, uh, some tasks that we can do that will that will show us whether that would be something that would be um, that would be suitable, um, and it would also um, show yourself whether it's something that would, um, in terms of your sensory um, any sensory sensitivities that you may have, whether it's something that might be triggering for you as well. So it gives you an opportunity to um, that they're quite involved, aren't they, Leslie? The workshops. Um, yes. they're, they're big days. Um, and so it does give you, again, an opportunity to try on the program to see if it, if it suits you for size. Absolutely. You know, there's, a, there's, lots, of, um, there's lots of tasks in there. Um, obviously, we, we, as we've said, there are technical tasks in there, but then there are non-technical as well. So, um, you know, we, obviously there's, a, there's icebreakers and things like that. But we also have a, a, a section in there on the hidden curriculum for neurodiverse um, individuals. Yes. We also have, uh, there's a section in there as well on, on how to deal with anxiety and stress mm -hmm. in, in, in the workplace, um, which you don't always uh, get. And you know, if you go along for, to an assessment center, if you're a graduate, um, if you are neurodiverse, they can be quite confronting. So um, yes. everything that we do as part of our assessment is, is to make sure that people feel comfortable and at ease. There's an ASC, um, present to uh, to speak to people as well and we start to introduce some of the uh, the, the tools that Michelle spoke to earlier um, mm. that we've got for the program because again that that hidden curriculum it's a really it's a it's a big part um, of the workplace um, understanding those social rules that people just seem to know um, and how do they find them out um, and so a big part of what the ASC does is to is to promote um, social skills um, and it's not because people don't have the social skills it's because they just have don't have the awareness of the hidden curriculum and and haven't had the experience in life to be able to read or have those social skills because in a lot of people um, who are on the spectrum it's not something that they that they feel intrinsically it's a skill that they need to learn um, and as with learned skills you need plenty of practice in order to be able to read them in, in differing context um, some of the guys that, that I work with, we have a, um, we have a little tea catch up um, a couple of times a week where we, we practice and facilitate some different social skills. And it's a good way of hearing about what the guys are doing in, in their outside life as well. And we talk about the hidden curriculum um, and how that's impacting them in the workplace. And they'll often describe me a scenario and we'll, we'll talk about where that came from and what some of those rule, um, what some of those rules are, um, and sometimes we'll even practice some responses to those um, because it can be confusing. You sit back and even we we all do it. We sit back and think, oh, I wonder if I interpreted that correctly. Um, but it can be even more confusing if you're inexperienced with with that kind of situation, and and also if you if you do have um, struggled with theory of mind, which is a, a characteristic um, of autism. So yes, but oh, I'll get some amazing things out of those. Um, those team mornings, I think I'm the one that lends the most. 